Center. Welcome to week three of summer camp. And today I'm going to show you how to make delicious, crunchy, salty, rosemary infused polenta fries. First, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the polenta. You can also make these with the pre-made polenta, but I'm a homemade kind of gal. So I'm using this polenta. What we're going to do is we're going to take four cups of water and we're going to bring this to a boil. Once that happens, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, there's our four. Oops, got my finger in there. Okay, there's our boiling water. That's four cups of water. And now I'm going to add the scant cup, one cup, a scant one cup of polenta, and I'm going to stir it so there are no lumps. Okay. I probably need a second hand, but Dave's making lunch. So let's just keep it going. You keep it boiling here. We'll just keep adding it. There we are. Okay. Here we go. And as I stir it, it's going to start thickening up. keep it. I'm going to stir for about five or six minutes. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to add a teaspoon of fine sea salt. And we're going to turn this down and continue to stir. Okay, I've been stirring about a minute, two minutes. You can see it's starting to thicken up. There it goes. You can see how it's starting to change. Now we're going to take it off and turn it way down and we're going to let it come back and stir in about four or five minutes. Just low and slow. For this recipe, we're going to add some rosemary. So here's one of my rosemary plants. Let's go pick a couple of sprigs of rosemary to put in the polenta. Now here's our lovely pungent rosemary that we'll be chopping very finely and putting into the polenta once it's reached the point um, that we feel that it's done. We'll also be adding a little bit of butter and a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Okay, this we've been cooking this about five minutes. The whole key is low and slow. I actually had it turned up a little too high, so now I've turned it down. Stirring it for a minute, then we'll let it go for another five minutes. Okay, I'd say 10 or 12 minutes in. Look at that, thickening up just beautifully. And it should probably take anywhere from a half an hour to 35 minutes. So here is the rosemary. I've taken off the sprigs and what you do is you just pull it off very gently, just like that. And then we're just gonna chop it very finely. Wow, it smells delicious. And here is a half a cup of Parmesan cheese that I've grated that will go in uh, as, along with the butter, which I still need to get out of the fridge. Okay, here's my rosemary. I'm going to show you. Just chop it up very gently with the knife until you get it in. chopped very finely. And you will put this in the polenta. Let me show you. There it is. See that? Not a very good camera angle. There you go. A little further back.
I'm going to do it too fine. Lovely. Okay. So I've been eating uh, polenta, or we call it cornmeal mesh where I come from. And my dad would make it on Sunday mornings. He would do the same thing that we're doing. He would make it, put it in a, a meatloaf pan or a bread pan, and let it sit overnight until it's solidified. And then he would cut it into slices and put it in butter and fry it. And then we'd eat it with uh, maple syrup and butter. Those are good memories for me. And um, my mom would have it every morning before she went to school and she was a kid uh, with milk. So this is a very old, long-standing recipe that goes back generations and generations. And especially, you know, you think it comes from Italy and it does, but um, you know, your grandparents and parents probably ate it a lot for breakfast in the morning. All right, let's give this a taste. I'm gonna Hmm. These grains are, are pretty coarse, but they're just about cooked through. I don't mind it that it's a little grainy, but I'd say maybe five more minutes. Now you want to taste it and see what the texture feels like to you in your mouth. This feels like just a tiny bit grainy, but it's really good. Okay, this is ready. I've tasted it and the individual grains are tender. Let's shake, oh, making a mess. Let's take this off the heat. And now I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter and a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. There's the half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And next I'm going to add it looks like around a tablespoon of rosemary. I, I like the, the herbaceousness of it. So um, it might be strong for some people, but you just need to experiment about what you wanna put in. Some people put oregano in, some people put rosemary in. I'm just gonna put rosemary in today. And we're going to mix this all together. My cameraman's in a meeting. I actually ordered a, a stand to use so I can film by myself. But today, I'm going with what I've got. Let's do this. Here, let me get a spoon. I got my, of course, I got my finger in the picture. Let's get a wooden spoon here, but it's lovely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in a glass pan, let it sit for a couple of minutes and then that glass pan will go in the refrigerator for a couple hours so this can set and then we'll be able to cut it into french fry shapes batons if you will okay okay now i've loaded the polenta into my pan i'm going to smooth it out and we're going to let it sit in the fridge for a couple hours and it should set up so that we could cut these into fries. Into the fridge we will go. Here is the polenta. It's been sitting in the fridge for probably two hours or so and it's set and now I'm going to cut it into little french fry batons and then we're going to put it in an oven. The recipe says 430 degrees Fahrenheit. I think 425 or be, would be fine, but if you got a 430 on your on your oven, put it at that. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them on a pan, a sheet pan, and we're going to brush olive oil on them and we're going to watch them in the oven, wait for one side to get really brown, flip them over to the other side and wait for the other side to get crispy golden brown. And then what we like to do is either dip them in blue cheese or ranch dressing. Eh, they're really, really good. Okay, let's see what these look like after I cut them up. Yeah. Here is our little French fried baton right here. Might be a little thick, but if you leave it in the oven long enough, they'll get crispy on both sides. And 
you know, salt them if you like. There's a little salt in here, so if you like salt, salt them a little more after you take them out of the oven. I will show you how to do that after return from my delivery to my daughter-in-law and my son with their dinner. So I'm going to take my olive oil in my brush and just brush a little olive oil on each one. And I'll turn it over and brush olive oil on the other side. I'm trying to remember how long this took last time I did it. Probably 15 minutes a side, but you really want it to be crispy and golden on each side. I'm gonna flip these over. Okay, let's put these babies in the oven. And they go at 430 degrees. I'm gonna check in about 10 minutes. I just flipped them over. They've been about 15 minutes, 430. This is the kind of golden crispy crust you want on each side. So I'm gonna leave these in for about another, you know, I'll check them in five minutes, but probably 10, at least 10 minutes. See how brown and crispy they are on this side. And I'm gonna turn this over to show you. See that? That's what you want. You want them crispy. I believe I have had these on each side probably at least 15 minutes, but you're gonna have to wait and just check out. You know, everybody's oven is different. Some might be hotter than others, but what you really want is that crispy outside, just like that. And um, I have some lovely ranch dressing that's a we're out of blue cheese dave ate the, all of that but we've got some a little bit of ranch left and that's what we're going to dip these into one thing i will say obviously the pan's very hot if you're going to make these with your kids just really proceed with caution and have a really good hot pad or oven mitt when you pull this um sheet out of the oven these are going to be crispy on the outside and creamy in the middle and I would let them cool probably at least five or 10 minutes. That's up to you, uh, parents, if you're gonna do this with your child or one of our campers. But uh, I hope you do enjoy these. Hopefully Dave will come in and we'll be able to sample three each. All right, okay, everybody, have a great week. Enjoy your polenta fries and let me know if you like them or you want to make a suggestion at youth programs at sgvcc.org. Okay, everybody. See you soon. The final product. Crispy, golden, ranch dressing. A little dredge of that. I actually was going to go get some salt, but I'm too lazy to get up. A little salt on these are really going to perk up the flavor. I would recommend eating these while they're still fairly warm so you get the nice temperature and the crispiness of the polenta fry. They start getting cold, they're not as crispy obviously, but wow. Okay, well, I hope you um, enjoy making these. They're pretty good. I'll see you guys soon. I'll tell you, Dave better get here. He went for a bike ride. There might not be any left. See you next time, everyone.